This is a grand opportunity not just for you to perhaps save lives, for you to open the door for many people to be introduced to fields that they never thought was possible, for you to create a technology that literally serves as the foundation for the next great technology. But this is a grand opportunity for you, for you to become a better version of yourself. Students are already coming in, so I might just have to hop up on there and hope that everything's in order. And the cool thing about this, I'm an alum, right? And you always hope that you, you do something where your alma mater is proud enough to invite you back to speak. And I've, this isn't the first time I've been able to speak here on campus a number of times, but this is for something that, uh, yeah, this is for a program that is they're proud of, and I'm happy to be able to represent. Are you up or down? No, we're going up. Okay. Did you already get a folder? No, I'm on the program, so I don't know if I needed one or not. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because you're a presenter. Okay, yep. All right, good evening, everybody. Before I get started, I don't want to make any assumptions, so I'm going to ask a question. It may seem like an obvious question, but I'm going to ask it just so I don't make any assumptions. How many people here want to have a successful career? Raise your hand. All right, you want to have a, okay, cool. That's pretty much everybody here. I, I didn't want to jump to the conclusion. I don't know, maybe some people want something different. But a successful career, that's you, right? Head nod, all right? So if you want to have a successful career, I need you to do me a favor and remember this equation. Grand challenges equals Grand opportunities. Do me a favor. Can you repeat after me? Grand challenges <laughs> equals <laughs> grand opportunities. <laughs> All right, cool. Y'all are with me. Let's see if this works here. All right, so 2003. If my math is correct, I think that may be the year that some people in here may have been born, your birth year. 2003, y'all, there was a disaster that took place with our nation's premier space agency. The Space Shuttle Columbia had been in space for about two weeks. And now it was coming back to Earth after finishing its mission. And when it reached roughly about 200,000 feet above ground, they lost communication with mission control. The last thing they heard the captain say was Roger. And so communications were shut off, and only later did they begin to get reports from news channels seen in the air as this space shuttle literally began to disintegrate in the air. How did this happen? This was the second major collapse, the second major catastrophe of the space shuttle program after Challenger in the 80s. And so what they tried to do, obviously, is try to figure out how in the world did this happen? Well, they remember two weeks prior when it actually took off. Something happened. A piece of foam was on the external fuel tank, dislodged and fell and hit the left wing of the space shuttle. At the time, everyone saw it, but they didn't think it was a big deal. At most, it left a dent. However, when time came for them to come back, these seven crew members were on this, and that, lot, that dent was really a hole where gas began to come into the wing. It began to literally compromise the heat shielding, and it led to the loss of lives. This was a grand challenge. And so there I was, my first opportunity to get exposed to this world of engineering, mere months after the Columbia Space Shuttle catastrophe, and man, I had made it. I was just working at Sonic Drive-In, but now I was a full-fledged rocket scientist. You couldn't tell me anything. I had the badge and everything, and even though I look like I'm just visionary person here thinking about everything, the truth of the matter is, is they just gave me a clipboard and said, go around and make sure you notate all of the safety violations. It was a grand opportunity. How can I take this NASA knowledge and apply it to my field of civil engineering, how am I going to build a field or build a career in the direction that I want to go in? So I began to look for the next opportunity. And that, my friends, is what led me to applying this knowledge to something else. Going online, Googling who is using carbon composites, structural health monitoring, and civil engineering. So I took that grand opportunity and moved here to North Carolina. These are grand challenges, but they're also grand what? 
their grand opportunities. And looking at these grand challenges, I began to focus in on one of them that says restore and improve urban infrastructure. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me there's a way that I can help restore and improve our deteriorating infrastructure using the knowledge that I had back in Huntsville at NASA that came as a result of the Columbia disaster, doing the wet layup of our carbon composites, applying our structural health monitoring technology to make sure we can monitor and, and see the propagation of embedded defect to see how we can determine not only can it be detected, but what type of impact certain size of defects have. This grand challenge that happened that I didn't even know was occurring led to a dissertation. It led to me being called doctor that I never really had a part of my plan. But it was a grand opportunity and I took it. If you wanna be successful, let's change the way we look at these things. Let's change the way we look at difficulties, challenges, obstacles, and instead of seeing them as grand challenges, we see them as what? Grand opportunities. Thank you all so much. That's my time. So we please record a little bit of the oh, day in the life. Oh, well, it's like a vlog. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm indebted to you, Jim. No, I really no, no. appreciate it. Thank no, you so no, much. Okay. Hey. Hey, I see you all the time. Good to see you. How you doing? If you really want to take some time to like make sure you, you know what, what you do want in your career, it don't have to be specific stuff. But I mean, it's like, hey, I like to work. I definitely want to work with holding. Or I definitely want to work with something that's physical that I can see. And then you can start reaching out just like you're doing to me. So right now I can tell you about civil. If you want to know about that. But you want to do more, have more conversations with people and, and things that you're thinking about. So that it gives you an opportunity to hear more about what it's really like. So STEM Media is a company where I create programming and content to help people like you who want to like build their STEM career. I went to a STEM school, so I, I worked at a CAD at 14, so. Oh, wow. I, I'm impressed. Thank you. So I'm that's impressed. My, that's my one plug. Yeah, for real, because I, I didn't, you heard my story, like I didn't get introduced to engineering until like junior year in high school and did a NASA thing, and then I was like, oh, this is it. I really enjoy these opportunities, had the opportunity to talk to, to, to students here at the Engineering Grand Challenge Scholars Program. These students have, have really picked big problems, which I like to share as grand opportunities to make a difference, to make an impact in the world. And so I just came to give a little bit of inspiration, tell about my story, and really encourage them that they have an opportunity to literally change the world in their chosen field. And so I'm filled up. There's always something inspiring about inspiring. And uh, mask or no mask, I think this was worth it. I'm so happy for this opportunity.